the second bedroom of the apartment, which I then turned into my kind of personal workspace. It's also great as a more or less a sound isolation chamber for when you want to scream into the void or just uh, have a quiet moment to yourself and get some work done. Essentially, this room and the eventual discovery of this room was a big part of our just apartment search process, right? We knew we wanted to have a two bedroom. We knew we wanted to kind of outfit it so that we could both have effective workspaces where we lived. Unfortunately, I've picked the profession that usually requires an entire room. So a big part of this room, which was actually very hard to find, this room is pretty decently rectangular. You don't usually want a square room with absolutely square dimensions in it because of its tendency to amplify what's called standing waves, um, which are really low frequency waves that have long wavelengths because then they'll just kind of start building up around different areas of the room, usually the corners, and they just kind of mess up what you're actually listening to. So the fact that it was rectangular was a great thing. Uh, the not so great thing is that it's small, obviously, but you know, you, you work with what you have. If you look on the floor, it's pretty much covered in carpet. That's pretty much just to obscure what's underneath it, which is basically three layers of mass-loaded vinyl, which is a very, very thick form of vinyl that is not totally soundproofing, very effectively sound dampening and sound treating because uh, I have the, uh, you know, knowledge that right below me is a ch child's bedroom. <laughs> So I really wanted to do as much as I could to make it so that my random work hours, whether it's late at night, um, even though I'm not blasting it, they don't bother anybody downstairs. So usually using the math loaded vinyl to basically cover the entire square footage of the floor of this room was a huge task, but it ended up being very, very effective. I haven't received any complaints from down there, which is great. Um, and then I just got some uh, carpets and kind of covered it up so it's not so much of an eyesore. And you know, I ended up getting uh, carpets that kind of fit with the aesthetic that I was going for. I got some pretty thick curtains. I have a, a window insert that's actually from uh, Indo Windows and they provide soundproofing windows that work very, very well for any extraneous noise when you've got, you know, when you're on a busy street that has a restaurant outside. If you were to close this door, um, it would really sound very, very wonderfully contained, which is exactly what you want when you're a musician. These panels are sound absorbent panels. They're pretty much standard feature of any kind of studio, whether it's a project studio or a professional one. You can buy a lot of these online. There are a lot of really, really um, glitzy makers who make them. I actually made these myself. So what I ended up doing was I, it was just a trip to the Home Depot. I got a bunch of two by fours um, and uh, then I, bought um, sheets of fiberglass, which are a really effective sound absorbing material. I bought some fabric in the fashion district and just some basic green color that I really liked and it ended up kind of matching the carpet incidentally. Um, and then I just kind of went to town. I got a saw, um, I used a jigsaw to kind of get mm, shapes that would help kind of hold the uh, fiberglass in there to make basically a frame for it. But that's basically what it is and then it's just uh, with a fabric wrapped around it with a hanger in the back hanging on the wall and it ends up being really effective. So I've got two on each wall right here and it's, you know, it's pretty much hitting the sweet spot and the points of reflection of the speakers so that, you know, what what's reaching my ears isn't interfered, interfered with. I've also got bass traps in the corners to, again, prevent that standing wave problem that I was talking about. Those ones I actually bought just because they're a bit, they were a bit more of a task, but I built the ones that are hanging up here from the ceiling and I actually hung them from the ceiling myself. Um, right here we kind of have the battle station, a big part of the inspiration of this room was I, I love having my keyboards on display and I love having my own little Starship Enterprise cockpit. Um, we got some Atom Audio speakers, really big fan of them, they're great. Uh, equipped also with uh, their compatible subwoofer which uh, can get pretty rumbly and it's always kind of a joy to have that going when you're mixing or even when you're just enjoying things and listening. On the back there is basically where I keep all of my cables. A really effective cable storage approach that, that I found was just getting a bunch of pegboards from Ikea. I got the wood color that, I don't know, it just again, it goes back to our both mine and Maggie's mutual love of earth tones. And while this room is probably the one that leans more into function than form than pretty much any other place in the house, I really did want to keep some elements that f made it feel like an extension of it just because the rest of the house makes me feel so calm and will, you know, ready to just you know, create without judgment and that's so that's a really wonderful thing for me. I installed the shelf um, right above the pegboard. It's again very basic IKEA 
and uh, that's just basically where I keep all my mic cases and stuff like that. And uh, similarly to the bedroom, there's an extra storage space up here above the closet. Again, keep a bunch of things up there, uh, storage cases, uh, extra books, extra, you know, little knickknacks and that. I've got some um, vocal filters up there as well. Another handy thing is like always get a uh, cable um, storage bin. So I've got two right there that just basically help take care of the tangle of everything. And uh, yeah, it just makes things look a lot less messy. And so long as you keep track of your ins and outs and which cables are going where, it actually makes things a lot easier and a little less stressful for me to get down and look at that. This is a personal point of pride for me. Um, so we were in Peru um, early around January of 2022 last year. Um, we had a great time. It was basically where I really decided for myself without telling her that I wanted to be with Maggie for the rest of my life. And we walked into a design store called uh, Puna um, in Lima. And we were initially there just to kind of get friends and family, like little things that we could bring them back, like bars of soap or little dishes and stuff like that. And I came across this hand woven um, lamp, which looked like either um, a Wendigo or some kind of woolly monster. And it just, and we went back several times because we were, we were Airbnb in a place that wasn't too far from it. And every time I walked in, I just, I just, my eyes just went to this and I just, I loved it. And so immediately when we got back, I decided, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet because I really want this for the space. And I got it. I had it shipped and I installed it myself. And it's, it brings me joy even right now when I'm just looking at it. It just kind of feels a little wacky and weird, and, but in a really compatible way and in a way that, you know, doesn't throw off the feng shui, but it really contributes to it.